This video is sponsored by Fantic. If renewables like wind and solar energy are ever going to truly make a difference in the energy game, we'll need to solve one major issue. Energy storage. There are all kinds of proposed solutions, from the classic lithium-ion batteries to more ambitious ideas like pumped hydro and other mechanical forms of energy storage. But what if we could store energy produced by wind turbines and solar panels in sand? One energy company in Finland has developed the world's first sand battery. But how will this battery impact the day-to-day -day lives of people in Finland? Could this breakthrough be the energy storage solution we've been looking for? Or is it just another pie-in-the-sky fantasy bound to come crumbling down? Let's dive in. Energy storage is a bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. There are solutions that are energy dense, but too expensive. There are options that are cheaper, but can't store as much power. That leaves researchers and companies on the lookout for the solution that's just right. Finnish energy company Vatan Janoski have made a major breakthrough in renewable energy storage, and it just might prove to be an utter game changer in the way European families heat their homes. The company calls it the world's first sand battery. A power plant in the town of Kantanpa, I believe that's how you say it, sits an enormous silo, 13 feet, 4 meters in diameter, and about 22 feet, 7 meters high. But instead of grain or food products, this massive tower is filled to the brim with 100 metric tons of sand. That's the equivalent weight of about 46 Tesla Model S's. The sand is nothing special in and of itself. Standard, low-grade sand typically used in construction. But you might be surprised at how much potential lives inside something so simple. See, sand has an incredibly high melting point, about 1700 degrees Celsius, which is about how hot the space shuttle gets when it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. For reference, the melting point of iron alloys and the melting point of steel occur between 1200 and 1370 degrees Celsius, which means sand can take quite a bit of heat and still keep its form. Not only can sand quite literally take the heat, it can hold on to that heat for a very long time. Sand has what's known as a low heat transfer coefficient, about 0.06 watts per meter squared per degree Celsius, which increases its ability to hold heat for a prolonged time. A one kilogram container of sand will cool from 104 degrees Fahrenheit to 68 degrees Fahrenheit in five hours and 30 minutes. Basically, sand can retain heat for extended periods of time. That's why beach sand can feel hot on your bare feet even after the sun has gone down. Why does all that matter? Well, because heat is just one form of energy. And we've mentioned in the past videos, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it simply changes form. What this Finnish energy company has done is found a way to harness power generated from renewable sources like wind and solar and store it as heat in these sand silos. Essentially, electricity from wind and solar is converted into heat using what's known as resistive heating. This is a process by which an electrical current passes through a conductive material, the resistor, where the heat is released. The greater the resistance the electricity encounters, the more heat is created. Resistive heating is nothing new. That's how toaster ovens work. Resistive heating typically is used in electric hot water heaters and a million other things. Like any other energy storage system, when the renewable sources produce more energy than required, it's directed into the sand. Instead of trying to move electrons from one electrode to the other, or water pumps to send water up into a reservoir, a sand battery uses resistive heating to increase the air temperature, which then gets transferred into the sand via a heat exchanger. When energy prices are high, the system discharges heat from the warm water for Vatan Koski's district heating system. That water then gets pumped to homes, offices, and even to the town's swimming pool. The current model of the sand battery has a capacity to store up to 100 kilowatt hours of heating power in addition to 8 megawatt hours of energy storage. Right now, the current sand battery provides services for around 10,000 people. But the company says that this is just the initial phase. Eventually, they plan to build batteries 20 meters across and 10 meters high. This can increase capacity to roughly 1 gigawatt hour or 1 million kilowatt hours. So at this point, you might be asking, why sand? And that's a good question. I don't like sand. For one thing, the process is incredibly low cost. Right now, as of 2022, the average price of construction sand in the US is about $10 per metric ton. Compare that to an average price for battery grade lithium carbonate, which has an estimated price of $17,000 US per metric ton in 2021. This also makes the process easily scalable. Want more heat? Just add more sand. The battery also uses no consumables and runs fully automated. Speaking of energy and filling up is a perfect segue to our sponsor this week, 
Fantic, and this, the X8 Apex Portable Tire Inflator. I've had this in the trunk of my Tesla since I got it. Routine checkups on your tires are one of the most important aspects of staying safe on the road. Plus, pumped up tires can actually increase your range. That's why I keep my tires at 45 PSI, like Tesla recommends. But before the X8 Apex, I was kind of lazy and I didn't inflate my tires nearly often enough. But with this little rechargeable gadget, I can just set my desired tire pressure, plug it up, and charge my tires anytime, anywhere, and it'll even stop when the right pressure is reached. And with the built-in flashlight and USB charging, I can keep it charged and with me at all times. It'll inflate everything from car tires, bicycles, and balls, and with excellent controls and build quality, it'll make an amazing gift for just about anyone. Check out the Fantic X8 Apex Portable Inflator today using my link in the description and use code rickyx 8 apex at checkout to save $30 for a limited time. Huge thanks to Fantech and you for supporting the show. Polar Knight Energy, one of the companies behind the battery, claims the setup costs are less than $10 per kilowatt hour. Now, some of these systems are designed to last longer. The sand battery in its current state is rated to last around 10 years, a pretty short life cycle. But with material costs not only incredibly cheap, but also incredibly abundant, sand batteries do seem to be the more cost-effective route. Heating and cooling sand in a charge cycle each day will do almost nothing to harm the sand. And therefore, the sand of a sand battery won't degrade like lithium-ion batteries do that are rated for between 12 and 5,000 charge cycles, depending on the chemistry. Now, while the sand has no real lasting effects charge cycle to charge cycle, there might be other components that won't last as long. Tens of years is a pretty vague amount of time. But consider that Tesla's batteries currently last between 21 and 35 years, but cost roughly $132 per kilowatt hour. The truth is, though, right now, this sand battery doesn't really compare to lithium-ion batteries for a few reasons that we'll get to in a minute. But sand batteries have some other strengths when compared to other energy production and storage methods. Right now in Finland, the vast majority of homes and businesses use electrical heat pumps. As of 2018, roughly 70% of newly built small homes use heat pumps. So in many ways, Finland is already ahead of the curve in phasing out gas and oil heaters. As we've mentioned countless times on this channel, heat pumps are incredibly efficient, in many ways difficult to beat. Still, during long, grueling winter months, Finns tend to run their heating systems more often, driving up energy as heaters are working overtime to maintain safe and comfortable temperatures. According to reports, during cold winter days where temperatures can drop well below freezing, peak energy consumption in Finland reaches about 15,000 megawatts. But the available domestic market-based production capacity is roughly 10,700 megawatts, which just doesn't quite cut it. As it stands, Finland generally imports a lot of its electricity from outside countries. We'll dive more into that in a sec, but suffice it to say, the grueling winters can put a major strain on energy grids in the EU. Much of the EU's power is generated by natural gas, which compared to coal and oil burning plants is a bit cleaner emitting 50% and 30% fewer emissions, respectively. But since 2005, natural gas combustion has risen nearly 43%, totaling roughly 505 million metric tons. So while natural gas is a cleaner alternative to some energy production methods, it's hardly the cleanest. As the EU plans to reach carbon neutrality by 2050, the search for cleaner production and storage methods is vital. So while heat pumps use energy very efficiently, they still derive most of their energy from the grid, which in Finland is mostly powered by natural gas. The sand battery could provide an emissions-free means of providing heat energy that doesn't strain the grid. Think about the statewide energy emergency that hit Texas in 2021. I've lived in Texas for you know 30 years and I've never seen this much snow. When an unprecedented polar vortex caused residents statewide to lose power, resulting in hundreds of people losing their lives. While the cause of that particular tragedy is multifaceted, it could have potentially been resolved in Texas had an alternative means of generating heat that didn't require overloading the power grids had existed. With the right infrastructure, a sand battery could have stored all that excess energy and released it back to homes even if the power grid had gone down. Then there is the geopolitical element. Right now, many countries in Europe, including Finland, get much of their gas and electricity from Russia. As the conflict in Ukraine has proven, that kind of reliance on global superpowers can create an imbalance of power. If countries like Finland can reduce their reliance on centralized power in more ways than one, it could help reduce a number of the severities of conflicts like this around the world. So, to recap, 
We have cheaper heat power by renewables that doesn't rely on power grids or carbon emitting sources. Sounds like a win-win, but of course, we always have to look at the other side. So maybe the sand battery is not the best option for storing electricity, but heat is something that we need and currently we store electricity for heat as well. Maybe the sand battery is a new form of infrastructure. Maybe we have batteries and pumped hydro for electricity production and we pump in heat stored in sand batteries, especially in regions that are really, really cold. And if we did this, we would lower the need for electricity, unburden the grid and still benefit greatly. Obviously, I don't, I don't see sand batteries having a really big future here in San Diego, but depending on where you live, they could be a pretty big deal, especially if they can lower the need for grid energy and give you a place to put extra excess renewable forms of energy like wind and solar. So that is a look at the sand battery and the Finnish company developing it. Pretty cool stuff. And it's a new innovative take on storing energy. Sure, maybe it never goes back to electricity, but you know we need heat and it could be a big game changer depending on where you live. But what do you think? Sound off in the comments below. All right, I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you next week.